Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck. Now, so many of you have requested a very specific recipe, a soup in particular. And, you know, since I love making soups so much in the Instant Pot, I think between that and pasta is one of my favorite things to make, um, I was also not excited to make it because I don't really love this soup. I've never really loved this soup. It's green, you know, it has the word split in it. Guys, it's, it's split pea soup. And it's like, you know, one of those soups that you just think about getting slopped on a lunch line or something, you know, split pea soup. I mean, when I typically would go to a restaurant and I would say, oh, soup du jour, what's the soup du jour? And they're like, split pea, and I'm like, oh, pass. I just never cared for this stuff, you know? But I love you guys, and so many of you have written to me saying, Jeff, please make a split pea soup. So guess what, guys? We're making a split pea soup, but we're doing it Jeffrey style. I would not make a split pea soup that wasn't going to be something to me that was going to be incredibly delicious, full of flavor, not some wet, sloppy, thin thing with, you know, green water with little balls of peas swimming around in it. We're not doing that. If I'm going to do a split pea soup, we're going to do one the right way. It's not going to be runny, it's going to be hearty, and it's going to be loaded with the most amazing full-bodied flavor of smokiness, some bacon in there, veginess, pea split peas uh, in there, and it's gonna be awesome. So wait until you see, guys. I'm gonna revolutionize the split pea soup. We're gonna go right to the Instant Pot and make it so easily, and quickly, and superbly. No more of that sloppy get in a cafeteria, eh. We're gonna be doing it right, and we're gonna be doing it tonight. Right in your Instant Pot, let's go. Let's start with one yellow onion and dice it up. Now I wanna take about two to three large carrots and about three stalks of celery. And look at this, I already found this in the supermarket. It's nice and already like kinda of cut up for me. And just cut it up a little more finely. And then dice them up so they look like this when all is said and done. Now take about eight to 12 ounces of a thick cut bacon. Now some people like to use a ham bone or a ham hock for this. I like to use a thick cut bacon. And I wanna cut this up into little like dicey pieces. And then just coarsely slice it up into sizes about this big. It doesn't have to be perfect in size, just like this is excellent. And you can also use pancetta if you wish to use that as well, by the way, but I really like the bacon. And if you are gonna be using a ham bone or a ham hock, you're gonna add that a little later, but don't worry about that for now. I'll get to that part when we get to it. And if you don't wanna use any bacon at all and keep it vegetarian friendly, you don't have to add any, but it really does make a split pea soup in my opinion if you have a bit of pork in there. All right, so let's go to the Instant Pot and add in three tablespoons of salted butter. So we'll come down to our control panel and hit the saute button and make sure we're on the more or the high setting. And we'll melt our butter. And once our butter is melted and it begins to bubble and maybe even sizzle a bit, let's add in our celery, carrots, and onion. And let's stir that around in all the butter and we're gonna let it cook for about five minutes. And then give it a stir every so often as we're cooking. And then let it set. And after about five minutes of our onions, carrots, and celery stirring and setting in the pot, we're now going to add in our bacon or our pancetta. And the reason why I'm adding this after I saute the vegetables is because I feel like it'll overcook if I add it first, because then I'm gonna marry it with the vegetables otherwise. So just when we have our vegetables nice and softened a bit, it's then time to add our pork. And we're gonna stir that around in the pot with all of our veggies for about 10 minutes because we wanna get our bacon nice and cooked in here. Not rubbery, but not super crispy either. Just in the middle. And obviously when you cook bacon, it's going to release a ton of its own amazing juices that's gonna flavor the soup up incredibly. And you're definitely gonna wanna stir every so often, like I said, because it's gonna become situated where all the butter and the grease and the bacon is gonna begin to pile up when it sits for a few moments. And after 10 minutes of cooking, we are good. Our bacon has been cooked to perfection. Any of those fatty pieces will have been cooked perfectly. It's like a wonderful, juicy ham at this point. And the flavor is to savor. You'll see the bottom of the pot shouldn't really have anything stuck on it at all from our occasional stirring. Alrighty guys, let's add the next ingredients. So now I'll add in a half a cup of sherry wine to the mix. And if you don't really like cooking with wine, that's fine. I'll write in the recipe how you can substitute not using that. And just stir up everything in the pot with the sherry for about a minute. And after a minute of our sherry simmering with all of our goodness in the pot, I'm gonna add our broth. I am going to add a combination of broths here, and you can do whatever you want, but I'm using two and a half cups of a ham broth mixed with three cups of garlic or chicken broth. 
And that's achieved by using some of my favorite stuff ever, and that is Better Than Bouillon. I am using two and a half teaspoons of the ham base mixed with two and a half cups of water, and three teaspoons of garlic or chicken base mixed with three cups of water. Again, you can use whatever you want. You can use only ham if you want it to be super hammy, or just chicken broth. Or if you want it less hammy, or you know, vegetarian, you can use garlic broth or vegetable broth. Regardless, use about five and a half cups of broth for this. Now, the salt content should be fine as it is with all the bacon juice in there and all of the broth. So we're, I'm not going to add any right now. We can choose to add some a little bit later if you wish. At the end, you can taste it and see what you feel. For now, I'm going to spice it up with one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of oregano, and one teaspoon of dried thyme. I'm also adding in a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. I still don't pronounce it right. All right, now let's stir all that around in the pot. And if you were using a ham hock or a ham bone in lieu of the bacon, this is when you'd add it now. And really, what would split pea soup be without split peas? Guys, I want to add a pound of split peas into the soup, and let's make sure we rinse them beforehand, okay? And into the pot you go. And we'll just stir that around in the pot, and then just top it off with two bay leaves. And just, you know, submerge them. And we are now ready to cook. Let's secure our lid and make sure we're in sealing position. And then we'll come back down to our control panel, hit the cancel button, and now let's hit the pressure cook or manual button, and we wanna go for 15 minutes at high pressure. That's it. And now that the pressure cooking cycle is complete, we're gonna allow a 15 minute natural release, meaning we do nothing for 15 minutes, the pressure is gonna release naturally on its own, and this is gonna to begin to count up once we're done cooking, and once it hits 15, that means 15 minutes, then we'll finish it off with a quick release. And now that 15 minutes of a natural release have passed, let's do a quick release. And the pin just drops, so let's take the lid off. And there is our split pea soup, looking great, guys. And first we might want to take the bay leaf out. Well, I have two of them in there, so get them both out. And there's my other bay leaf, there you are. And just really get in there and make sure you stir everything up because the peas will have been in the bottom and we want to make sure that we get them nice and incorporated into the rest of the soup and it's going to become the perfect smooth thickness. And the consistency of the soup is absolutely spot on, beautiful and perfect. It's thick but not too thick. It's certainly not runny. It's exactly what a split pea soup should be. Oh man. All right, we're going to add in one more unconventional ingredient that's totally optional. Guys, we are going to add, you guessed it, some of my favorite stuff, borsin. I'm going to add about two tablespoons worth of this stuff, which is about a lightly packed a quarter of a cup worth, okay? And now I'm just going to mix that into the soup. Make sure it gets nice and melded. It's going to meld in very quickly because it's very hot. And it's going to give it this amazing undertone of a creaminess. It's not going to be overpowering at all. Just a little bit of a hint. And there we go, guys. The most unbelievably luscious perfectly smooth, rich, and slightly creamy split pea soup ever. And also loaded with amazing, amazing bacon, which is basically going to taste like an unbelievably tender ham. So let's ladle some into some bowls right now, shall we? All right, here we go. Very nice, beautiful bowl of split pea soup. And a very hearty split pea soup at that. And perfect. We are now ready to put a spoon in this and try it out. And look at this magnificent soup, guys. It is insanely hearty. It is full of carrots and celery and onion and also, of course, amazing bacon in there. All tied together by our split peas, which causes a beautiful color and also an unbelievably perfect consistency. So let's take a nice spoonful of this and try it out. Here it is, split pea soup. Let's see. Okay, green. You know, like that show Wicked, Alphaba. This soup is wicked, wicked awesome to all my New Englander friends out there. Guys, this is the real deal split pea soup. And like I said, if I was gonna make a split pea soup, it was gonna be done right. And guys, let me tell you right now, this is done right. Oh, wow. Just look at the consistency to the soup. It's creamy, but it's also thick, but not overly thick and certainly not runny. Nothing was worse than when your pea is runny, you know? Mm. The flavors are just all coming together in your mouth at the same time. Whether it be the vegetables, the peas, the bacon, all at the same time, perfection. And whether it be the colder or the warmer months, this is a split pea soup I'd have any time of year because it's that superb. Guys, if you enjoyed these videos, go to PressureLoveCooking.com because I have tons more there with recipes, written recipes for every single one. Huge array of recipes with more coming each week. Go to Facebook.com slash PressureLoveCooking and like that page for any time a new recipe drops. For any sales and items that might come out that I'll hear about, I'll share those there 
there as well, some tips, some humor, things like that. And of course, at Pressure Love, subscribe to me on YouTube, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram. Thank you again so much for all of your support and for making me make a split pea soup because I wouldn't have probably done it because honestly, it was never one of my favorite soups. But that all changes now, folks. This thing is spectacular. This soup is so unbelievably delicious and green, you'll defy gravity when you make it and when you try it. I'll tell you one thing that's not split about this soup is the opinion on how amazing it is. Trust me, it is awesome. Go for it. Mm, the bacon. Don't tell my rabbi. Mm.